Assalamu alaikum. Uh, in the previous lecture, we talked about the molecular spectra, and we know that a molecular spectra consists of three contributions one from rotational spectra, the other is from vibrational spectra, and the third one is the electronic spectra. So, today we are going to explain the rotational spectra. In order to explain the rotational spectra, we have to know about the rotational energy level. So, in order to explain the rotational energy level, uh, we first consider the simplest case and that is the case of diatomic molecule. So, here we have a diatomic molecule consisting of mass m1, mass m2 and this here is the center of mass. So, the distance of the mass m1 from the center of mass is r1 and that of mass m2 is r2 and this capital R is actually the separation between these two masses we call it the internuclear distance or technically this represents the bond length. So from rotational dynamics we know that at equilibrium condition m1 r1 must be equal to m2 r2 and we also know that r is equal to r1 plus r2 so from these two equations we can derive that r1 is equal to this one and r2 is equal to this one now the moment of inertia of this uh, two body system is equal to the moment of inertia of the mass m1 and the moment of inertia of the mass m2 so we have moment of inertia i is equal to m1 r1 square which is the moment of inertia of the mass m1 plus m2 r2 square which is the moment of inertia of the mass m2 so in the previous slide we have equation 3 and 4 which consists of the value of m r1 and r2 and in equation 5 is the total moment of inertia so that is here if you put 3 and 4 and 5 so i is equal to m1 so this is the value of r1 square this is the value of r2 square so after the simplification we are here for the simplification you are here and then we put mu for m2 m1 divided by m1 plus m2 and this is known as the reduced mass of the system in some book they uh, represent this reduced mass by m prime so this is up to you if you represent by m prime or, or if you represent it by mu so this is not a big deal now we know that the angular momentum of the molecule should be equal to l is equal to i omega where this omega is the angular frequency and we also know that the angular momentum at the uh, molecular uh, level is quantized so this l is equal to j into j plus 1 under root h cut where j should be equal to 0 1 2 3 and this j is actually known as the rotational angular momentum quantum number so this is the same condition we have already discussed in the uh, atomic physics so the energy of the rotating molecule is equal to this is half i omega square you may know uh, this equation very well so from uh, here you can put uh, omega square is equal to l divided by i so the, you are arriving at this equation and then when you put the value of l here so you are here at this value this ej is equal to j into j plus 1 h square square by 2 mu r square so by changing the value of j the energy of the rotational uh, um, uh, motion is changing so actually this uh, energy is quantized because we have the uh, discrete values for j so if j is equal to 0 mean there is no rotation and j is equal to 1 is the lowest rotational state so when you go when you go on giving energy to the system so the system go to the higher rotational energy states so here we take a simple example of the 
carbon monoxide uh, molecule. So we know that the bond length of carbon monoxide molecule is uh, 1.13 10 to the power minus 10 meter. It consists of carbon atom and oxygen atom. The mass of carbon is this one. Mass of oxygen is this one. So from these two values, we can calculate the reduced mass of carbon monoxide so when we put these value so the reduced mass of carbon monoxide comes out to be this one now uh, in the previous slide we saw that the rotational energy is given by this relation so the lowest rotational energy state uh, is for j is equal to one so if we put j is equal to one so the first or lowest rotational energy state e1 is equal to this one now uh, if we put the value of h cut square mu and r square so we are here so the first rotational energy state is this one if you convert this from joule and to electron volt so the first rotational energy state is this one now the room temperature energy is this one so we see that the, these rotational state uh, are quite low in energy so when we are at the room temperature so we can see that carbon monoxide molecule must exist in the very high excited energy state at room temperature okay so now we want to see the elastic effect on the bond length so uh, we can find the angular frequency uh, of the molecule for example, in different uh, rotational energy state, let's suppose we find the uh, angular velocity and the lowest rotational energy state for j is equal to 1. So uh, we know that this e is equal to half i omega square. So from this relation, we can find the relation for omega and that is equal to 2 e1 um, divided by i square root. So we can also put the value of i that is equal to mu r square. So in the previous slide, uh, we had the value of E1, we have the value of mu, we have the value of r. So putting all these values, we could find that the angular velocity of the um, carbon monoxide molecule for J is equal to 1 is 3.23 10 to the power 11 radian per second. So this is quite high angular velocity. And this high angular velocity results in stretching of the bond that is the bond length is increased so for example if we consider uh, hydrogen fluoride so uh, when there is no rotation so for j is equal to 0 the bond length is 0 0.92 angstrom for j is equal to 1 is 0 0.921 angstrom so there is an increase in the bond length for the higher rotational state, J is equal to 5, the bond length is increased to 0 0.941 angstrom. And then for the much higher rotational uh, state, the bond length is increased to 0 0.96 angstrom. That means there is an increase of the bond length with the rotation. So, okay, so if there is uh, stretching in the bond length during uh, the rotation, so we have to consider the Hooke law while discussing the rotational energy state of a molecule. So uh, this uh, elongation in the bond length actually induces a restoring force and this restoring force then affect the rotational energy state of the molecule. So we are going to find the effect of this uh, restoring force on the rotational energy state of the molecule. So let we have the force constant represented by k r0 is the normal bond length mean when there is zero uh, rotation uh, in the system and this r is the stretch bond length this is the uh, elongation and the bond length due to the rotational state of the system so uh, here the restoring force is equal to the centripetal force because it is the restoring force that induces the centripetal force so we know that the restoring force is given by this relation so this r minus r0 is actually the elongation that is induced in the bond length and mu omega square r is the centripetal force i hope you know this relation very well so uh, 
we can simplify this equation further by if we uh, multiply uh, and divide this equation by mu r q. So uh, in the numerator we have this and in the denominator we have this. So uh, we know that L is equal to i omega i is equal to mu r square so l is equal to mu r square omega so here we have mu square omega square r4 so this must be equal to l square and uh, we know that uh, uh, l is equal to uh, j into j plus 1 under root at curl so the l square is equal to j into j plus 1 at curl square and then this is r minus r0 is equal to uh, j into j plus 1 h curve square divided by k mu r q. Okay, so uh, you saw uh, in the example of uh, hydrogen chloride that the elongation produces very very small. So we can say that this r is very very nearly equal to r0. So uh, we can put uh, uh, r uh, is uh, r0 in the previous equation equation number seven so we have r minus r0 is nearly equal to j into j plus one h cut squared divided by k mu r0 q now we know that the total energy is equal to the rotational kinetic energy plus elastic potential energy so this is the rotational kinetic energy and this is the potential energy so uh, this there is, uh, you you have to simplify this for example you just uh, multiply and divide it by i so you have i square omega square 2i and here you just need to put the value of r minus r0 over here you apply the square and make uh, the simplification so you are here now again from equation number eight you can put r is equal to r not this one or you can have r is equal to this one so uh, here we have in the de uh, denominator r square and r zero square so this r is variable so we have to express this energy actually in terms of the r zero so for that uh, we have to express this r in terms of r zero. so here we can also write this as 1 by r square is equal to 1 by r naught square this one and now we can expand this by binomial theorem and we have to neglect the square and higher term because this term is actually uh, less than one and the square and higher term go on decreasing so they don't contribute significantly to this uh, expansion so uh, we have to ignore this so whenever we have uh, this situation so what you need to do you just uh, bring this uh, power along with its sign here and the rest of the thing is exactly the same uh, don't do it anything so now we have 1 by r square is equal to this one so um, we have to use this uh, equation number 10 in equation number 9 so here this was equation number 9 on the back page where we have to put the value of um, 1 by r square from equation number 10 here so you have 1 by r square here and 1 by r square here so you here you have to just put this value over here so you are here and then after the simplification you are arrived at this equation number 11 and now further it is simplified is like this so where uh, this b is equal to this thing which is known as the rotational constant and d is equal to this which is known as the centrifugal distortion constant this you have to keep in mind that uh, the value of d actually depends on k so uh, if the um, bond is more rigid so the value of k is higher for example for a, for a perfect rigid molecule k must be infinite and if k is infinite so d is equal to zero so there is no contribution from the centrifugal distortion and uh, if the bond is elastic this is more elastic so the value of k is smaller and the value of d is higher so the centrifugal distortion will 
go on increasing so here we have so larger the value of k more rigid is the molecule and lesser is the centrifugal distortion so uh, here we have a comparison of the uh, energy level of a rigid and non-rigid molecule so the rotational energy of a rigid molecule is equal to this one so so here the d is equal to zero so you have a rigid molecule and the rotational energy of the non-rigid molecule is this one so we can see that uh, the energy level of the uh, rigid molecule are lower than uh, that the energy level of the non-rigid molecule are lower than those of the rigid molecules you can see it here as well so these are the energy levels for the rigid molecule for j is equal to 0 1 2 3 up to 5 and these are the energy levels for the non-rigid molecule so you see here when the value of j is smaller so the difference between the energy level is not that much prominent but as you go on increasing toward the higher rotational uh, quantum number value so the difference between the energy level of the uh, rigid and non-rigid molecule go on increasing so uh, this was all about the uh, rotational energy levels for the uh, diatomic molecule next we will go to uh, discuss the uh, energy level of uh, rotational energy level of a poly atomic molecule and then we will go to discuss the uh, vibrational spectra of the molecule so uh, uh, along with this uh, um, presentation you can also read some books and i find some interesting uh, video uh, regarding the molecular spectra on the internet so you just follow uh, this link so you can have uh, um, a lot of more uh, information about the uh, molecular spectra so the next lecture will be about the rotational energy level of the um, polyatomic molecule okay thank you